Hi, this is Paul McGuire, and you are watching a prophetic emergency alert being broadcast from Southern California, Los Angeles. On today's program, I'm going to give you an analysis of what's happening in our nation in terms of cultural trends, social trends, economic trends, spiritual trends, and then analyze those trends in the light of Bible prophecy because Bible prophecy has an uncanny record. In fact, the statistical record of Bible prophecy for getting things right is 100% accuracy over thousands of years. Now think about that. There's no other source of intelligence. There's no other source of information. There is no other source of predictability which guarantees, based on historical performance going back at least 7,000 years, which guarantees 100% accuracy. Now, the only Bible predictions or the only prophecies in the Bible that have not yet come true, you can't discount those because when you read those particular prophecies, you see that they are destined for a future time. That future time may be tomorrow, it may be three years from now, it may be 50 years from now. But of every Bible prophecy that has been made throughout the Old Testament, that includes all the Old Testament prophets, like Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel and Joel and so on and so forth, and then we have the, prophes the prophecies by the, um, the apostles, like the Apostle Paul and the Apostle John, and so on and so forth. And then we have prophecy that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And we have prophecies from Genesis to Revelation. Now, every single prophecy, without exception, that is predicted in the Bible has come true with 100% accuracy. The, again, the only ones that have not come true are those prophecies that within the body of the text in the Bible, they, they aren't supposed to come true until a, a future date. In other words, it's not that they have failed to be accurate, it's simply that the prophecy is not supposed to be fulfilled until a future time or until certain other events have to happen before that other prophecy uh, can come into being. Now think about this. Think about every world religion. There's no world religion that has a prophecy rate like the Bible. Not even close. In fact, all of the world's religions and texts um, are flawed with the exception of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. They have either made prophecies that did not come true or they, <laughs> they've made prophecies that um, will never come true. But the point is they're not accurate, they're not reliable. Now this, this has been going on for at least 7,000 years. When we read Genesis, the book of Genesis, which is the creation account, let's just toss that one up for a moment. Genesis is the creation account. It tells how Adam and Eve were created in the Garden of Eden, which was paradise, and God makes Adam and Eve essentially the king and queen of planet Earth. It is the job of Adam and Eve to rule and reign with authority uh, over planet Earth. And, and planet Earth in the Garden of Eden is paradise. The only law or guideline 
or parameter or rule that God makes for Adam and Eve. He just gives them one commandment. They can see, he said, hey, look, Adam and Eve, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, that's right. He said you can do whatever you want. He gave Adam and Eve a blank check. But he said the only thing you can't do, just one rule, one little itsy-bitsy rule, and that is you cannot eat from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. So Lucifer or Satan, which our culture doesn't believe in, actually our culture does believe very much in Lucifer and Satan and the fallen angels and the supernatural. Our culture deeply believes in those things. You say, Paul, what, what, what do you mean? Well, look at it this way. Behind just about every major secular humanist political ideology, uh, ideology uh, economic plan, behind all of those things, behind all the plans of the communists and the Marxists and the socialists who boldly proclaim that they do not believe in God and that there is no God, but the secret is that behind the scenes they, are, they very much believe in the supernatural, supernatural powers, they believe in a God, they believe in a devil, they believe in Satan, they believe in fallen angels, and they believe it's possible for mankind, men and women, to radically alter our planet and our world by merging what can be called supernatural power or spiritual power with uh, psychological power or economic power or ideological power. But they hide that because it's not a good selling point for the for the bad timeshare program they offer. I don't know if any of you have ever sat through a, uh, uh, a timeshare presentation. It's agony, by the way. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. And in the time share presentation, they tell you all the wonderful things that you'll be able to do if you pay big bucks for the timeshare. How you can travel around the world, that you can have inexpensive vacations for your family. And basically, they're promising you a little bit of heaven on earth. The problem is, when you go to use the timeshare that you've purchased, most often, not all the time, but most often, Timeshare companies, uh, even though they may have big corporate names, the timeshare companies don't essentially keep their end of the bargain. There are some that do, but many that don't. So basically, you get ripped off. But they're not going to tell you that up front. They're only going to tell you the good things. So, when we study history, and, and, and by the way, on the Paul McGuire Report radio program, which airs Monday through Friday, and then it re-airs during the weekend, and you can hear the Paul McGuire uh, report for free by simply going to paulmcguire.us, that's paulmcguire.us, and you can tune in for free to the Paul McGuire report, where we give a daily analysis and program that deals with all kinds of powerful and interesting subjects. And if you forget how to uh, tune into it, just go to paulmcguire.us. We have a number of social media platforms that will enable you to, to hear it. And uh, we have uh, numerous platforms like brighteon.com, Roku Channel, and many others. So you need to hook up and connect with uh, that, um, uh, that program. And then also we have the video uh, prophetic emergency alert that you're watching now. Now you're listening to um, the prophetic emergency alert. I'm Paul McGuire and we're going to continue exposing the truth behind some of these powerful human movements. That they are not what they pretend to be. That these people pretending to be atheists and Marxists and socialists and, and ardent believers in evolutionary theory and, and firm believers in the so-called scientific method, in reality, secretly, all of the lead, or most of the leading Marxist leaders, communist leaders, socialist leaders, 
were secretly or semi-secretly Satan worshippers involved in witchcraft, involved in the occult, involved in the supernatural. In fact, they were practitioners of Satanism and witchcraft and the supernatural. Karl Marx, as I point out uh, in my book, uh, The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World. Karl Marx wrote with Frederick Engels a book called The Communist Manifesto where he promised a worker's paradise, like a perpetual timeshare program. Marx promised a worker's paradise to the working class man. Uh, uh, Marx promised uh, complete social justice. Uh, he said that communism would liberate the masses. Marx said that communism would give every man and woman incredibly fantastic health care for free. That every man and woman would have an excellent, high paying and meaningful job and Marx said that we're going to create, with our human will and, and scientific knowledge, we're going to create the world's first scientific society in which um, we're going to promise you a worker's paradise, which means heaven on earth. So the driving force behind the seduction, and that's what it is, it's a seduction, the driving force behind the seduction of communism, Marxism, and socialism is deception. It's the lie that they're going to give you heaven on earth. It's the lie that they're going to redistribute the wealth fairly. It's the lie that you're going to have a great job. It's the lie that they're going to reorganize society so that you won't have all these, you know, 1% trillionaire class while other people are slaving away. See, that sounds wonderful. You catch my attention. You catch the attention of hundreds of millions of people around planet Earth, including the millennials and, and those attracted to uh, Black Lives Matter and other socialist groups. It sounds great. We're going to give you social justice. We're going to, we're going to solve uh, uh, systemic racism. Uh, we're going to create a, a perfect world. Okay, but here's the problem. Anybody who knows history, all they have to do, all you have to do, is look at the historical track record and you can check it out for yourself. I have 
I have the historical track record of communism, Marxism, and socialism in my book, The Greatest Battle, Conquering the Matrix, and, and many others. And we're offering you a special financial discount if you go to paulmcguire.us and you can get a financial discount on buying just one copy of one title of one of my books. Or if you want to get big savings, you can go to paulmcguire.us and if you buy a book bundle where you get like two or four copies at a time, you can save even more money. But then you get, I promise you this, you get when you read The Greatest Battle and the other books, you get a download. And I say download because uh, uh, the manner in which I write books, I've written 34 books, and I strategically and intentionally write my books in such a way that they're not boring, they'll take you for a wild ride, you'll be gripped and entertained, but at the same time that you're gripped and entertained, you're being downloaded with an enormous amount of unbelievably powerful, gripping, interesting information that when you access that, it will radically change your life 180 degrees. What I'm trying to say is, I don't, even though I'm a professor of eschatology uh, at a Christian uh, seminary and a college, which is a fancy way for saying a professor of Bible prophecy, even though I'm called by my students Professor McGuire or Dr. McGuire, I don't write in a boring style. I write for the ordinary person, people like you and me. And I tell the truth, and the truth is explosive. But the most important thing is that in the information that you will download by reading these books, first of all, again, you will not be bored, but second of all, they're not dry, academic, you know what I'm talking about, stuffy books. They, they, the books are intense, and I promise you this, the books will transform your life on a personal level, on a family level, on a life level, on the level of a nation, a society, a community. These books are the result of over 40 years of intensive research and experience on my part. Over 40 years of research where I've written over 34 books and when you read these books they will set you free. That's the bottom line. The books that I write set people free. They set people free economically, spiritually, psychologically. Why? Because they contain truth. They're, what, I, what I have in the books are not little mythologies. There's no fairy tales in these books. There's no little myths or parables in these books. These books, to be blunt, rock and roll. And they'll rock your world for the better. You see, the reason so many people are, are being made slaves in our society, and this is the most important thing that drives me to write books, to produce feature films. I produced uh, a number of science fiction feature films that have been released in movie theaters uh, all across the United States. I've hosted television shows. Um, I, I've been a regular commentator on the biggest uh, uh, programs on Fox News Network and CNN, and I've been the uh, uh, special guest and special expert on uh, numerous History Channel specials like uh, uh, Seven Signs of the Apocalypse and Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which are the, some of their record-breaking History Channel specials. And I've done many other things, uh, many other interviews, and I've been in many other feature films also. Because I am driven, I am driven, I am energized with this, with this, uh, energy, I, I don't know how to describe the energy I feel when I begin to write, study, research, and speak to people like you on these subjects. I'm energized because I know, I know that when you, well, you just glance over the material in the book, it's addictive. 
you glance over the material in the book, and I know that the truth in the book will transform your life on numerous levels and set you free. And most books, with the exception of the Bible and the Old Testament and the New Testament, many books promise to do that, but they can't deliver. So this is not about me, Paul McGuire, boasting about myself. The reason my books radically set people free, radically change their lives for the better, is first of all, their relevance. Second of all, the Bible and one of the principles of life itself is this. The Bible says, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Not, not knowing, you know, uh, the, the baseball scores of every game going back 30 years for a particular team. That may be entertaining and fun, but that is not going to release power in your life. If you want to... What is a person of power? A person of power is somebody who possesses the energy, the resources, the wisdom, the knowledge, the guidance, the assets to make things happen for themselves and make things happen for other people. And one of the primary principles of God's Word is that knowledge is power. When you gain knowledge of any subject, which means you have to self-educate. You have to self-educate because if you're looking to what I call the mind control factories of public education to um, educate you, you're going you're gonna to strike out. Because the purpose of modern education is not to educate, it's to indoctrinate. It's to make you a slave of somebody else's system. Now, most Christians that you talk to, they don't get this. Most Christians, most pastors, most churches, most denominations, uh, most seminaries and Christian universities, etc. And there are notable exceptions. I'm not making a blanket statement. There are notable exceptions. But the overwhelming majority of them seem to miss the boat. They, they, don't, they don't really understand the power of God's Word and the power of the Bible. They take the power of the Bible and they take the power of God's Word and, and they turn it into uh, you know, a, a cute little religious churchy thing or they, they, they turn it into some anemic, powerless, uh, religious thing. It's not. It's not. You know, when you get tr real knowledge, and real knowledge is when you know the truth. Jesus Christ said, when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. But Jesus wasn't just talking about religious truth. Jesus was talking about truth in every area of life. Because Jesus Christ is not only King of Kings and Lord of Lords, but Jesus Christ is the great I Am, and Jesus Christ is the creator of all that is. Now, when we gain the knowledge of God's Word, that is the knowledge that releases explosive power and dynamism into our lives. That is the knowledge that gives us power in life. Because when you have true knowledge, you then gain the knowledge that keeps you from being a slave, sets you free if you are a slave, and can totally transform your life. Many of you are listening to me in different nations and regions on planet Earth. And I thank God for you, you tuning in to the Paul McGuire Report and this uh, uh, prophetic emergency alert. We have people watching this right now. You're in uh, the Scandinavian countries, or you're in Denmark, or Sweden, or Germany, or uh, China, or um, the USA, 
or South America or any region on planet Earth. I get communications and people go on our social media and I talk to them and, and it's, it's thrilling and it's a privilege. It's a privilege uh, on my part to serve you. And by the way, I'm using the word, it's a privilege to serve you because any true leader, um, especially somebody who says they're a leader who teaches the Bible and, and, and preaches the, the, the saving message of Jesus Christ, any true leader, the way you can tell the difference between a cult leader, a false leader, or a false prophet, is this. Any true leader comes to you as a servant. And you can judge and discern whether or not somebody's a true leader by whether or not they're coming to you to serve you. They're coming uh, to you as a servant. Because that is the hallmark of a true leader sent by God. Anyone who comes to you and seeks to be served rather than to serve others is a false prophet, is not sent by God. Notice that all the cult leaders have something in common. All the cult leaders come to be served. They don't come to serve. How do you detect the difference between a valid and legitimate um, political leader? For example, a, uh, how do you detect the difference between a, a, a leader that is qualified to be president of the United States? How do you tell the difference between a true leader and a false leader? We're going to get into this in just a moment. I'm Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. And by the time you finish listening to this series of messages that we're entitling uh, The Prophetic Emergency Alert with Paul McGuire, you will experience freedom at a higher level than you've ever experienced it in your life before. But it's not a self-centered, narcissistic freedom which, in which you get to indulge yourself perpetually. It's you experience a freedom, and the way you know that the, that the message of that freedom is legitimate is that when you are set free by the knowledge that gives you the power to be set free, the proof in the pudding is you have an overwhelming desire, an overwhelming compulsion to take that knowledge that you've gained and truly serve others by setting them free, setting their families free, setting their nation free, setting their lives free. And so once again, the way we determine a true leader from a false leader is a true leader must be a servant. And the true leader, his or her number one goal is to serve you by communicating effectively the message of the truth and by telling you the truth. And that truth, by the way, didn't come to planet Earth on a flying saucer uh, like chariots of the gods. That truth didn't... Um, you know, materialize from a, another dimension. We're not living in, as Elon Musk said of Tesla Motors, we're not living in somebody else's virtual reality. I mean, you know, Elon's a genius, uh, he's a billionaire, but l let's be honest, I, I appreciate the fact that he's a genius and a billionaire, but he gets out there. I'm Paul McGuire, visit paulmcguire.us, and we will be back in just a moment, and remember, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Hi, this is Paul McGuire, and you are watching the Prophetic Emergency Alert. And on today's Emergency Alert, we're going to analyze what is happening in our nation, culture, and world through the lens, or through the perspective, 
of Bible prophecy. Now, why is it important to analyze current events, etc., through the lens of Bible prophecy? Well, it's important, it's imperative, it's paramount to look at uh, our reality all around us and internally and externally. The only way that we can accurately um, analyze and understand and gain knowledge from the multi-dimensional reality all around us is that we have to access a higher level of truth. Most people go through life operating at a very low level of truth. Okay, so for them when we bring up the word truth it's either an abstraction or it's ambiguous or it, it, it hints of something spiritual but when the day is done people don't really know what truth is and they don't understand just how important and vital truth is to their lives. Now what I'm going to share with you now uh, is being said intentionally by me to, to strategically and hopefully effectively shatter inside your mind, every one of us inside of our minds, our brain, integrated with our personality, every one of us look at life and we look at reality through the prism of some kind of bias. And we may not admit that we have a bias. Uh, we, not, we may not admit that we're biased, but all of us are. And the problem is that the bias that we carry with us internally, because that bias was embedded in us either through uh, what I call the mind control factories, which is uh, the educational system from kindergarten to PhD level or whatever, that bias was embedded in the mind control factories whose stated goal, and I have, I, I have the documentation from the heads of the educational establishment who openly wrote about what their stated goal was, what they, what they hoped to accomplish. And that goes back to Aldous Huxley, author of Brave New World. Aldous Huxley, who advocated the scientific dictatorship. It goes back to Brzezinski, who advocated the, technocrat uh, the technocratic elite and the technocratic dictatorship. And Brzezinski, uh, I think it's his daughter was, um, maybe still is, I don't know, his daughter uh, was on one of these... Uh, cable news networks. Not a particularly, not the, not the brightest bulb on the tree. Her father was a genius, but in my opinion an evil genius. He worked closely with Rockefeller uh, and helped uh, uh, found the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations. Brzezinski helped to uh, build these uh, totalitarian global networks uh, with and for some of the most powerful people on planet Earth, such as the Rockefeller family, such as Rothschild, and many others. But that's one thing. But then when you read Brzezinski's writings, and you listen to his speeches, or you watch a video of his speeches and interviews, if you're saying, and you read Brzezinski's own writings, and what he is planning to do, because he, he was Secretary of State. He held uh, some of the highest offices in the United States for a variety of presidents. Yet, what Brzezinski stood for with his philosophy, his, his ideology, and his access to unlimited funds, what Brzezinski stood for was a totalitarian dictatorship. Um, a, a uh, psychotronic dictatorship. And that's, that's kind of like not American, right? Don't you agree? That taxpayer money, uh, major newspapers, major media outlets, they shouldn't be all organizing using our money 
to enslave us. And, and he writes about it openly without even blushing. And, and, to, and, and in 1976, and I have the documentation, I have the exact quotes, so if, you, if your head is spinning through some kind of cognitive dissonance because you've now been exposed to the truth, you look at his 1976 book, um, and he openly calls for, in that book, I have line by line the quotes in my book, Conquering the Matrix. He openly calls for a technocratic elite and the use of psychotronic weapons on the American public. Here is one of the most powerful leaders in the world and one of the most powerful leaders in the United States and he is openly calling for the implementation of a psycho, uh, the usage of psychotronic weapons on the American public and a technocratic dictatorship run by a technocratic elite. So let's break this down for you. Remember, knowledge is power. If you want to know what's going to happen tomorrow, you have to understand what's happening today. And any church, any educational system, any media, any author, any communicator, any cultural leader who chooses to deprive you of access to truth, no matter what kind of smile they have, no matter how skillful they are in, in seducing you with social pleasantries, any man or woman who, who comes to you like some kind of Manchurian candidate pretending to be one thing, but in reality is something else, is, is a slave master looking to enslave you on behalf of the elite. Now, if that sounds strong, I only gave you a small dose of the truth, which is in my book, Conquering the Matrix. Conquering the Matrix, you need to read, you need to get it. It's a fast read. Conquering the Matrix will explain to you simply the reality, the sophistication of what is now called scientific mind control. All right. And then, as I talk about in the book, uh, Brzezinski calls openly, uh, in his 1976 book, he calls openly, and the name of the book is Between Two Worlds, he calls openly for the use of psychotronic weapons on the people. What are psychotronic weapons? Psychotronic weapons, and I've been writing on psychotronic weapons for 35 years, psychotronic weapons are the technical, technological sophisticated weapon systems that your average American does not believe exists. So it gives the it gives the people who want to use those weapons on the on the masses a big advantage because the majority of people enter into this psychological dynamic and principle which prevents them psychologically from receiving and processing the real truth about the reality that we live in. Because you see, we have all these inner psychological, 
self-protective mechanisms that, that are built into us, like computer systems. And they're built into us uh, intentionally by God to enable us to survive psychologically and physically. But the downside to these uh, uh, psychological dynamics for survival that we all have built into us, the downside is that sometimes the human being, the human species, in order to survive, a human being, a man or a woman, or a culture or a nation, will often embrace uh, a lie, or what Adolf Hitler actually called the big lie. And a, a, a mass population, like in the United States or in other places, will actually embrace a lie, will actually embrace a big lie, because a big lie is preferable to um, accepting a true truth or, f or a final reality that will actually set you free. You see, the truth will set you free. But that implies that the truth is true. Dr. Francis Schaeffer, the eminent theologian, called it true truth or final reality. In order for the truth to set you free, it, it can't be a fabrication of the truth. It can't be a Disney cartoon version of the truth. It has to be the unvarnished naked truth. You need to see it for what it really is. And that's going to hit you with velocity and impact. And when the truth hits you with velocity and an impact, it's not for the purpose of frightening you or scaring you or demoralizing you. It's that when your inner man or woman, your core being, see, what I'm talking to you about right now uh, on this prophetic emergency alert, I'm talking to you, and if you've never watched it before, I'm Paul McGuire, I'm talking to you about the bottom line, what is really real, what, what this, this reality we live in is really all about. Because if you don't understand what this reality we live in is really all about, you are going to be a slave, inevitably, and you're going to go into captivity, and that usually happens incrementally. What I'm saying is that the, there, there, was the, there was the illusion of Nazi Germany, and the Pied Piper for this illusion was Adolf Hitler. And Adolf Hitler was a artist, so we know he was a highly creative man. People say, oh, Adolf Hitler uh, was rejected from uh, art school, and uh, it demoralized him, and that opened the door for Satan to possess him, and so on and so forth. That's a partial truth, but not an entire truth. You need to read my uh, bundle discount on my two-book bundle discount of A Prophecy of the Future of America, Volume 1, and A Prophecy of the Future of America, Volume 2. And you'll see the whole real story of Hitler, the Nazis, mind control, the supernatural. And um, since the publication of those books, you know, a lot of people have heard me speak on radio, TV, or read the books, or read articles about the books. And... Um, I pioneered um, the research into this entire area.
MKUltra was a Nazi mind control program originated by Nazi mind control scientists in Nazi Germany. At the same time, the Nazi rocket scientists were building rockets for the Nazis, and at the same time, the Nazi bacteriological warfare scientists were, were building or were creating uh, artificial biological viruses and bacteriological warfare. So, in 1947, at the end of World War II, our government, under a secret program called Operation Paperclip, smuggled in secretly 10,000 Nazi rocket scientists, Nazi mind control scientists, and Nazi biological warfare scientists. And they were given different names, and they were given an assignment, and uh, they were promoted to the heads of major think tanks. They were the heads of major uh, military warfare laboratories. They became the heads of major university uh, uh, warfare research projects like Stanford University, where they did MKUltra, the usage of LSD, etc. It was the Nazi scientists who discovered and, and utilized LSD first. And um, then um, they, they received the most prestigious positions, these Nazi scientists. But many of them were Satanists. Many of them were deeply involved in the occult. And, and the worst thing of all was that many of these Nazi scientists were monsters.